everybody. My name is Donna McKibben, and I welcome you to today's meditation. Have you ever been restless? Like, I mean, not just nervous, not just move, movement restless, but you're not sure about what comes next, or you think, well, I wonder if, I wonder if I'm in the right place. I wonder if I'm doing the right ministry. I wonder if, if, if. Well, my re a recent discovery for me is that I am restless, and I didn't even realize that that was the problem. But I started reading through the hymnal just because once in a while you pick up a hymn and it really speaks to what you're going through. And this one really spoke to me, and I want to read you the first two verses at this point, and I'll give you the third one later. But it's, be still my soul. And if you have a hymnal, it's on page 534. Be still my soul. The Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, God faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as in ages past. Your hope your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know the Christ who ruled them while he dwelt below. I read that and I thought, you know, how many times do I think about the fact that God is truly with me. He planned my future. He knows what's happening. He knows that all the things that I need to do and be to be in the place he wants me to be. Now that doesn't mean that I already know where he wants me to be, but what it does do is it stills my spirit. It allows me to rest in the fact that I am God's, that he loves me, that there is nothing that I can do that's going to diminish that love or even increase that love because it can't be increased. It's there. But I got to thinking, okay, am I, am I restless because I don't feel like I have much of a ministry anymore. And that's, that's part of the issue, I know it is. But this isolation has kept me from doing the kinds of in-person ministry that is my passion. And so sometimes my spirit just kind of sags. And I, I need something to, to bolster it, to keep it active and to keep it fresh. But even reading the scripture sometimes doesn't do that. So I try as many things as I need to be in a place where I can listen to God, where I can hear him, where I can see where he's leading, where I can see what ministries he might have me involved in even when I'm by myself. Sometimes I read scripture and I get nothing impacting. I don't come away with anything that stays on my heart and mind. I wonder about that sometimes because I always think, I should, the scripture is so full of things and so full of life of God. Why don't I know it? Why don't I feel it? Well, 
God never said we had to feel everything. He said we needed to know. We need to know God. We need to rest in him. We need to think about him. We need to sit with him. We don't always need to feel him. It's hard because I'm a, a, an emotional, feely person. I like to feel what's going on, but I don't always. But I got to thinking that sometimes the major key isn't so much that I feel him, but that I know him in my mind and in my heart. And I thought, okay, if I know him in my mind, what is, what is the basis for my thinking? And what do I need to do? Well, one of my very favorite scriptures comes from Philippians 4. <clears throat> Philippians 4, verse, verses 6 through 8, essentially. And I'm reading from the, the, New Living, the New Living Translation. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Oh, golly, I should pray. Huh, duh. Sometimes that misses me. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Sounds so simple. Tell him what you need and thank him for what he did. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And that says it all to me. God's peace is what I need when I'm anxious, when I'm, oh, when I'm restless and uncertain. And I just need to remember to pray and ask God for what I need and thank him for what he has done. Let me read you the third verse of the hymn. And it ties it all together. It says, Be still, my soul. The hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointments, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow forgot, love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. Just ties the whole thing together. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful day out here at the marina. Thank you, Lord, that you have control of our minds and our hearts. And you tell us to fix our thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Lord, we do praise you and we thank you. And I pray that you would take our restlessness, put it in your hands, and keep us at peace with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, God faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, your God will undertake to 
still my soul, the hour is hastening on, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow forgot, love's purest joy is restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed we shall meet.